Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and your personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and this week we have a very special episode. We are talking today about coming together in community. So I really believe that together in community, we have freedom. So Unify for Even More Success is the topic of today's episode. And we also have John C. Morley back in collaboration. He is a serial entrepreneur, engineer, marketing specialist, talk show host, member of the U.S. Press Agency, writer, video producer, and president of his local Chamber of Commerce, 501c3. John has inspired children and adults of all ages to find their passion. Through his personality and knowledge, he gets people excited to learn about themselves, others, and of course, science. You can quickly check some of the past experiments he has conducted by going to YouTube and typing Science Fridays with John or visiting BelieveMeAchieve.com to see many of his other fabulous creations. John knows that not everyone learns in the same way. Thus, he provides himself on being dynamic and exciting and teaching from the auditory, visual, and kinesthetic perspectives. So again, this week's show is coming together in community, unify, unifying for even more success. Now, on the first half of the show, John will be sharing about unifying in your business and your community. And on the second half of the show, I will be getting into manifesting and creating the lifestyle you desire with an example of how to prepare to sell your home, the physical and spiritual metaphysical steps to have the most success in this process and how unity in the process can make all the difference. So this weekend, I just wanted to bring up the fact that, oh my gosh, Monday, um, the weekend into Monday morning, we all saw the power of unifying in community as many of us in our beautiful Southern California and surrounding states prepared for a big hurricane. I am grateful that it went down to this tropical storm and it was actually quite peaceful where I was. So... Uh, I am grateful for that, but it was really wonderful to see how everybody came together in community and preparation to make sure that in case it was a larger hurricane, that we were all as safe as possible. So thank you to all the workers, personnel all over California and surrounding states that actually helped stay awake and stayed prepared to protect everyone over this last weekend. So this is important. It was to me an important example of how asking for help when you need it comes into place, how unity comes into place, how that together we are greater than we are when we stand alone. So that is the topic again of today's show. So now I'm going to welcome John C. Morley on for the first half of this collaborative series. And John will share more about unifying the various parts of our lives. Welcome to the show, John. Well, thanks once again, Sheila, for another warm welcome. It's always a privilege and pleasure to be on your show. And of course, we have another great uh, topic to share uh, with our wonderful uh, viewers and listeners. 
I'm going to go ahead and put the QR code at the top right-hand corner of the screen. But listen, if you're not watching us and you're listening to us on the radio, well, then go to BelieveMeAchieve.com. Why? Because I have another master class coming up. And for my special viewers and listeners here, you can actually go to BelieveMeAchieve.com, click on the master class at the top. And if you use the code that I'm going to go ahead and pop on the screen for you guys right now, uh, you will save some money off of the registration. I know you guys are going to want to do that. So go to BelieveMeAchieve.com and then put in the code JCM9KCAA. That's capital J, capital C, capital M, number nine, capital K, capital C, capital A, capital A. And again, you're just going to go to Believe. That's BelieveMeAchieve.com. Uh, Once you get to that site, you're going to see the third link uh, down, it says JCM Academy Events, um, JCM Academy Master Classes, Motivation STEM Classes. Click right on that, and you will be brought over to my page, which will have the information on it. So you're definitely going to want to uh, check that out because lots of great information to share with you guys. And I hope you guys will come to the next uh, Master Class. We're going to be talking this time about how to make a decision. If you remember... On a previous show, we talked about, you know, how to make a decision, but I didn't go into it that much in depth. I'm going to go into it a lot deeper, and I know you guys are definitely going to want to check this out because, you know, sometimes in life we do get stuck and um, we need to make decisions, don't we? All right. So today's master topic, I think you guys are really, really going to love, and this topic is one that everyone needs to know about. And you're probably wondering, what is the topic? The topic is this, unify. Unify and unite. And you might be saying to me, John, what the heck does that mean, unify and unite? Like, that's just so, that's so very confusing. Um, well, I got news to you, friends. It, it's not confusing because... Um, this is something that everyone needs to do in their life. And if they don't choose to unify and ignite, well, they're going to be lost sometimes. And so let's go right into what the definition of uh, unify is. So unify is a verb, according to Merriam-Webster, and it's to make into a unit or a coherent whole. The other important word, of course, uh, beside uh, that is going to be unite. It's also a verb. It's a transitive verb to put together, to form a single unit, to cause, to adhere, to link by a legal or moral bond, or to possess different things such as qualities in combination. Now, when we think about our lives, many of us don't quite understand what it means to have a team or to have support. I know when I first started uh, being an entrepreneur and then becoming a serial entrepreneur, one of the things I had to learn was that, you know, you can't do everything yourself. You need a team of people to help you because let's face it, there are a lot of things out there. And if you want to be, let's say, the best at what you're doing, then you need to have a team to support you. Now, not just any team. I'm talking about a team that really believes in what you're doing and, and all that kind of great stuff. So when we think about the word unify and we think about the word unite, what goes through your head? I know maybe some of you are thinking about an airline, uh, but no, we're not thinking about an airline here. We're actually talking about something completely different. We are talking about your life. And so let's ponder for just a second because when I talk about the concept of unite, to come together, right? If we're going to come together for maybe a common cause, uh, sometimes uh, charities come together, uh, sometimes people come together in uh, different foundations, but they come together for a single purpose, a mission. Things like the 4-H group come together to help people. The Make-A-Wish Foundation comes together for a certain cause and purpose. And, of course, it doesn't help, uh, I should say, hurt that they're, um, you know, 501c3 and uh, a tax 
um, free organization as per the IRS. So you can, you know, make your tax, um, you know, tax uh, deductible uh, donation to them. And by doing this, you're able to help them and you get a tax break at the same time. So let's talk about something that's really important when we think about the concept of uniting and unifying. So getting unified is important, but I want you to think about it from a certain perspective, and that is to unify with family, friends, teams, sports teams, and even companies. I know a lot of people that, you know, they're on a team and they're expected to be a team player, but they're not. They don't understand that team has you and I in it, okay? Team nowhere has the word just I. And this causes issues with ego. It can be a challenge in business. It can uh, be a slight problem um, in your personal lives. So my message right now for you is to get unified, to unite. So you might be saying, hey, John, how do we unite? Well, you know, that's a that's a great question. And I'll answer that in just a second. But I want to share with you the fact that you made the choice to unite. And so when you make the your choice to unite, that's when magic starts to happen. So what can we unify with? Well, we've got nature. Um whether we're talking about, uh, you know, the flowers, uh, different insects, uh, it could be other animals, uh, blades of grass, the trees, the wind, the water, uh, ducks, birds, maybe the sand if you're on the beach, okay, the ocean, or perhaps a pool. Now, I know a pool isn't really nature, but you're still outdoors and you're still taking in that wonderful fresh air and exhaling carbon dioxide. So when we get unified, life becomes very different in a very positive way. So I say to get unified with nature, to get unified with your life. And so how do you get unified with your life? Well, it's really simple. Uh, you can also unify with other people. Again, when we're talking about unifying with teams, football teams, baseball teams, basketball teams, they all have this ability for um, a common purpose. Let's think about the Olympics for a moment, right? And the Olympics have a big mission to unite everyone that's on the same team. Now, sometimes people on that team don't unite, don't unify. Why? Because they get jealous. How about in your own workforce? Do you find that sometimes people don't want to unify or help you or just do like the minimum and then not really offer much? Well, it's because they're afraid or maybe they're intimidated by you or threatened by you. When what they really need to understand is that if you unify, we're actually going to be stronger as a team. See, the more minds that come together, the stronger we are. We are greater as a team than we are as one alone. And so we can unify with different people in our lives. That's right. We can unify with different people. And by unifying with different people, I think that's something that is really, really amazing. Because we could be talking about cultures. We could be talking about, um, let's say, uh, uh, different um, maybe languages we could be talking about um, different styles of living, which actually happens from different cultures. Uh, maybe we also can talk about when we think about people, you know, what motivates someone that might not motivate us just because of their upbringing. We can also get unified when it comes to music. If we unify ourselves with music, amazing things happen. The first thing that happens is we might relax. The second thing that happens is we could potentially stimulate a part of our brain that releases dopamine, 
that's going to cause us to be more productive. Like Tony Stark from um, Iron Man. I love to listen to Tony Stark productive music, and it's free on YouTube. And so I listen to that, and I will tell you, the first time I started listening to Tony Stark's productive music, and there's other productive music you can listen to as well, I was doing this because I had gotten writer's block a few months ago. And so I don't know if you guys know, but I'm up to about 12 million words uh, that I've written so far since January. Uh, you can check out many of my great articles by going to believemeachieve.com or scanning that QR code at the top. And when you think about, I'm going to say, um, this whole concept, you might be on the fence saying, John, I don't quite understand. Well, I unify and unite myself with words. Um, there were two amazing articles that recently came out, Be Life and How AI Will Protect Them. You remember that one? And you never made a mistake. Try being humble. I'm not going to share with you what this week's uh, article is. There's going to be two, but you're going to have to check it out. I will tell you that one has to do with AI. I'm not going to tell you what part of AI. And then another one, well, I'll give you a hint. It uh, goes in a little deeper about what I'm talking here on the show. So I think you guys know what that might be. And so when we unify, like I did with that music, no joke, ladies and gentlemen, I had, and my, my compositions that I write are usually between, I don't know, 800 to 1,800 words. I had about 800 words on my computer screen in Word in less than 15, 20 minutes. So I went from being stuck to being unstuck. And I did it in a way that was fun and creative. And, I, and I've said this to you guys before. If you choose to embrace creativity in your life, you will be not only amazed and flabbergasted with what will happen and transpire in your life, but it will probably amaze others. So another good reason to unify in life is because when we unify, it actually shows others that we have what I'll call a common purpose. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a common purpose. So a common purpose might be something like uh, we all want a green, friendly environment. Or we all want to make sure that there is no discrimination in the workplace. Okay. That would be no discrimination for race, religion, sexual orientation, color, creed, none of that, right? And a lot of people make it their daily, let's say, uh, project to be not only a watchdog for this, but when something happens and unfortunately its head gets reared, they speak of them saying, hey, what are you doing? I mean, just, I'm going to say uh, a couple of weeks ago, I won't mention the company, but there was a large a CRM company that actually um, was getting sued by a local tutoring company. And this happened because this large CRM company that does um, capture uh, employment applications found out that somebody was not considered to work because of their age. Now, that's discrimination. There's all kinds of discrimination. And so it raised a question to what's exactly going on. And then they blamed it on technology, but I'm not going to go there. I just want to let you know that this is something that happened. I actually talked about it on my tech show because I feel that we can't put the blame of what's happening on solely technology. We have to take that accountability ourselves. All right. So you might be asking me an interesting question and, and, and I'd be happy to share it with you. And that is when we think about uniting, right? We think about uniting. You, you might be wondering, John, what does it mean to unite? What does it mean to unite? And common purposes are, are very, very interesting, but it can be more than that. It can be the fact that we as people 
are now propelled to do something we didn't already do. And the sole reason for that, ladies and gentlemen, is because now we see and believe it's possible. If you guys can see my hat and know my motto, which is believemeachieve.com, believe and achieve, and you will. When we choose to unite, so many great things can happen, as well as us believing that we can do it. I said this before. Henry uh, Ford said a great thing. If you believe you can't, you're right. And if you believe you can, you are also right. So make the choice to get unified with family, with friends, with teams, with sports teams, uh, companies. So how do you get unified with family? Well, one thing is to spend time with your family. Uh, maybe it's playing board games. Uh, maybe it's taking a walk. Uh, maybe it's uh, helping them with a, a project that they're working on. Or perhaps uh, it could be something as simple as um, sharing a compliment from the heart, right? Hey, mom, um, that was a delicious breakfast. Oh, you know, oh, you're welcome. The eggs were just great. They weren't runny. They were amazing. And I love the bacon. So don't try to flatter people with your compliments. Take them from the heart. And a lot of the stuff that I share with you builds upon other episodes, if you haven't noticed already. Getting unified in life, well, that's a little harder because now we're not just talking about, I'm going to say, uh, one thing. We're talking about people. OK, uh, we're talking about work, right? Um, nature is nature, right? But I find life, let's break it down to people. Let's break it down to work. And then the other thing that we can get unified with besides people and work is, as I said, music. And um, sometimes there might be an organization that's doing something. It could be cleaning up. It could be. Uh, feeding the homeless, whatever it is, that's a great way to unify. So you can unify through uh, a charitable organization, right? Uh, I gave you a couple um, examples. One was Make-A-Wish Foundation, and there's lots of them. There's another one called Light the Night. Uh, there's so many. So when we think about Unite, okay, uh, and we think about, let's say, um, unifying, we think about things that go together, right? For example, I've got a roll here of tape, which you guys can see or you can hear that I'm talking about, and I've got a dispenser. And so the tape goes well with the dispenser. Why? Because it holds it. And two, it has a place to put the tape. And three, it has a place so I can actually cut the tape without actually having to get a pair of scissors, right? Uh, what are some other things that go well together? Uh, peanut butter and jelly, pasta and sauce, ham and eggs, nail and a hammer, screw and a screwdriver, staple and a stapler, music and relaxation. And of course, there are dozens more of these. But when we make a choice that we want to bring a natural marriage, people come together to unify, right? Uh, whether that is a uh, man and woman, man to man, um, Woman or woman, again, we have to be politically correct here. So when two people decide to, decide to spend their lives together, they are unifying. They're unifying uh, their purpose, but they're not changing who they are. So if let's say that before they decide to spend their lives together, the one person loves to cook. And let's say the other person doesn't. That doesn't mean that when they spend their lives together, one's going to stop cooking. But it does mean that the other person could decide to learn cooking because when you come together, you want to figure out what common purpose is. Um, in business, a common purpose is integrity. Another common purpose for being in business uh, is to solve a problem. And the third thing is going to be to make a profit. Now, notice I said it in that order. I didn't say make a profit first, right? And the reason for that is too many people start off with wanting to make a profit first, but they don't focus on integrity. They don't focus on good customer or client services. They don't. 
They don't focus on solving a problem. Why? Because they don't care. They just know that they want to do whatever it's going to take to make money. And that's a good recipe to rob people, to make a lot of money, and then to put yourself out of business in a few years or sooner. So unifying is something pretty cool. Uh, when we think about an army or we think about um, the Air Force and the Marines, they unify as a team, right? A football uh, group comes together as a team. Baseball comes together as a team. So what does a team mean? What does that unify mean? Well, we all have the purpose, let's say, to be on the, um, the baseball field. And while we are in the um, outfield, okay, somebody is on the pitcher's mound. Another person is on, um, let's say, uh, first base, second base, third base, home plate, shortstop. Right. Another catchers in the field. I happen to be a Yankees fan. Sorry if uh, I'm getting people here that don't uh, like the Yankees. I know uh, in California, you guys probably like another team uh, and probably, uh, you know, the, the baseball team that you guys like uh, is uh, if, I, if I had to take a, a strong guess, uh, for wouldn't, wouldn't have to guess too hard. Uh, they probably would be one of the uh, one of the one of the top five if I had to guess. And so, um, you know, we could be talking about the Oakland Athletics. Um, that's probably one that uh, that you guys uh, like a lot. Uh, you probably like uh, the L.A. Dodgers, the L.A. Angels, San Diego Padres, right? But that team actually knows their purpose on the field. They know that when they pitch that ball out and somebody hits it, their goal is to catch it so they get an instant out. That's everybody's uh, motive. Now, if they don't catch it, then they know they got to scurry like, you know what, to get the ball, throw it to first base quickly before he gets there, and bam, they're out. If one player is not paying attention, we don't have a team. We have a partial team. This is what happens in companies. I don't care whether you're talking about building a house. I don't care whether you're talking about engineering a new network. I don't care whether you're talking about painting or you could be talking about planning a party. It does not matter what you're doing. Everyone needs to be on page, the same page, or you'll find that you have multiple teams and no one's on those teams. So if everybody's running their own team and we're not putting them together, we don't have a team. We have a bunch of people that are just running around with their heads uh, barely on. And they're trying to do everything, but they're not collaborating. So the reason I like unifying uh, so much is because unifying is a basic premise to help us as people, as organizations come together. And it makes it really, really easy. Now, you might be saying to me, John, so what makes a good team? Well, <laughs> real quickly, this isn't about teams today, but I'm going to share it with you. One is to have open communication. The next is to establish shared goals, define individual responsibilities, build trust between the team members, maximize team member strengths, show respect to everyone on the team, provide helpful feedback, delegate when possible, celebrate six, uh, the, the uh, successes, small and large, ask questions, encourage fun, and agree to disagree when necessary. That's pretty amazing. So you're saying, John, if I actually took the challenge that I'm working on right now, and I have a good team in the office, or even at home, get your family members and build a good team. Maybe you have an idea to, I don't know, let's say you're going to put in um, uh, some uh, shrubs, or maybe you're going to put in uh, a new swimming pool. Now, maybe you're not the one going to do it, but maybe you need a team to figure out, like, what kind of pool, where does it go, and involve people, right? Uh, maybe you need a team to help you figure out how to run um, the household more efficiently. And the thing about a team is a team is not embarrassed 
to ask others for help. And of course, I'm talking about your own family unit. Um, work is a little bit different. I get it. But it's the same premise. What happens at work oftentimes is there's the egos and these egos just kind of rear their heads. And because they rear their heads, it can be a really big problem. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have an ask for you, if I may. I would invite you to please go to BelieveMeAchieve.com. And when you do so, go ahead and click on that link that I have told you about. Uh, yes, that is the uh, third link, Jason McAdamy Events, Jason McAdamy Masterclasses, Motivation, STEM Classes. Click on that. And when you do that, um, you will be able to select the next class coming up. And you can use this promo code that I'm going to pop on the screen, JCM9KCAA. My other ask is please like, love, support my channels, follow them. And I am John C. Morley. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I am open to additional keynotes, um, team building workshops, whether that be remotely or in person. I do writings, public relations, video production, and a lot more. And I'm happy to help you figure out what it's going to take your company, your business, or you as an individual to get from, let's say, the first furlong all the way out to the last furlong. And one thing I'm going to tell you it's going to take is an accountability partner. And I can be that accountability partner for you. I am a business and a personal coach, and I know how to get you to be motivated. And I got a tip for you. It's not about hitting you on the head. It's not about yelling about you. It's not about insulting you like one of my trainers did, actually seven of my trainers did. I went from 100 and, 250 pounds down to 169. I'm still on the way to 165. And I did all this, ladies and gentlemen, without the help of any trainer. I fired my trainers. And someday I'm actually going to tell you on uh, the show how I did that in a little more detail because it's pretty cool. And so accountability is number one. Okay. Passion has to come first. You have to have passion. You have to have accountability. But you also have to have integrity. So passion, integrity, and accountability. PIA, <laughs> passion, integrity, accountability. If we get the order wrong, you know what happens? It falls apart. What happens if you were to start building a house and you start putting up, let's say, um, I don't know, let's say you start putting up the sidewalls and you don't start the foundation. What's going to happen? It's going to fall down. So what I've learned in life is everything has a sequence. Even though it doesn't have to be verbatim, there are certain sets of tasks we need to be doing before we can actually take the next step or rung on the ladder. And you have to remember, as we talked about last time about being humble, Remember that we need to ask for help sometimes. Make the choice, ladies and gentlemen, to get unified. You can have fun with unification. You can help others. And you can just create so much energy that people are going to want to be on your team. Try it out. Maybe just, um, it could be just uh, at home with your family. Maybe everyone, you know, goes to a different room to watch TV. Well, maybe tonight, let's all watch football or let's all watch this movie together. And I know a lot of families are like, oh, I don't want to do that. I watch my game just for once or maybe just once a week. Why don't you put your, let's say, uh, wishes aside and entertain the wishes of others so that you can have a common unified ground? You'll not only have fun, but you will build trust and a new type of friendship and bond will connect, one that you didn't even think was possible, all because you've showed your family members that you actually care. Remember, we all can talk the talk, but walking the walk is the most important thing. So ladies and gentlemen, I am John C. Morley, serial entrepreneur. Please do reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you with any of your challenges, including creating compelling social media that can actually get, yes, you notice and get people to take action. All right, have yourself a great one. And Sheila, again, it was great. Uh, back to you. I can't wait to hear what you're going to share with us because you always do such an amazing job 
taking my topics and collaborating them into something. It is just really a uh, genius the way you do that, uh, Sheila. So um, back over to you. And I can't wait to be with you guys again uh, next week. But in the meantime, in the meantime check out BelieveMeAchieve.com. And uh, we'll see you soon if I don't see you at one of my classes even sooner. Take care, everyone, and uh, be well, everyone. Take care. Thank you again. And if you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and we just had John Morley on as a special collaborative guest talking about unity. And now we are going to continue with the power of unifying for your investment success. So here's another great episode of the Sheila Mack Show, where we dive into empowering topics that guide you toward unlocking your dream lifestyle. Today, we're driving into powerful concepts that apply not only to personal relationships and teamwork, but also to the world of real estate and your finances. Yes, we are talking about the power of unifying and how it can transform your journey in purchasing your first home or preparing to downsize into a vacation lifestyle. So whether you're a real estate enthusiast or someone looking to achieve your goals with a unified approach, this episode is for you. So let's first talk about the definition of how to unify, to unite. So to kick things off, clarifying what does unify or unite mean? Unifying is about coming together, harmonizing efforts and aligning towards a common goal. It's like assembling different pieces of a puzzle to create a beautiful picture. Whether it's your family, your friends, teams, or even companies, unity strengthens our ability to achieve success. Okay, so what does that mean for you? Well, I wanted to kind of backtrack a little bit to our last weekend, <laughs> the weekend we just had that was crazy, interesting, where we had a hurricane that may, that was said to um, possibly hit us in California and surrounding states. And I just am so grateful for all the people that came together in unity, in community to make sure that we're all safe. And luckily it just ended up being a tropical storm and it wasn't anything to worry about, but it was us coming together and the power of community that that just showed up last weekend and how wonderful that is. So unifying can go into different aspects of our life. Let's apply it to the various aspects. Imagine how much smoother things can be when that we're all on the same page. Think about your family, for instance. When family members communicate and support each other's goals and work together, the overall experience becomes much more enriching. So how does that translate to making things easier for you? If you are preparing your home for sale right now and you're getting ready to buy something different. So the first thing I like to do is get into the metaphysical or spiritual prayerful side uh, of, of this little process. And it makes it so much easier and faster when you go through these steps. So first thing is to know where you're headed. That is to go ahead and decide, okay, who am I being in this experience? And where am I going to go? What is the outcome? That means you need to really take a look at where you are right now, financially, in your lifestyle, in your career. How are you going to work if you move to a different state or different location? Uh, what is that going to look like for you? So that's your orientation. That's really being honest about where you are and what you're going to want to do with your finances in order to move to a different location and what you need to do to sell your home. Then there is the order of operations, and that's the next step. And I love to start with the prayerful or spiritual metaphysical, depending on 
where you're at in that side of things. And that is to take time and thank your current home. Thank your home for providing you and your family with wonderful experiences and times and um, show some gratitude, um, thanking the people, the friends and the people that you've met in the community that have really touched your lives or your family's lives as you've lived in that home. Go out to the community and really celebrate your time with the people, whether it's the coffee shop, um, even the people that pick up the trash service, you know, thanking everybody and giving gratitude is going to set this energetic tone to help bring a beautiful buyer to your home. And so that, that also prepares you for your next step. And so thanking the home for the celebrations you've had, how it made you laugh, the silly things you and your family or friends have done there, um, the times that you've got through, maybe some tough times, and how you celebrated on the other side of those moments in that home. So thinking about those things is, is a, a great place to start, to set that tone. Now you know where you're going or what kind of outcome you desire. And you know that you're grateful for what you have. Being grateful for what you have is going to bring you even more gifts and blessings. So it may be that you're like, I'm sick of this place or I'm sick of this community or whatever it might be. <laughs> I don't like this job anymore. I'm moving. I'm relocating for this new job. What, what have you? That's So that's an energy that it may be part of the factor, but what can you think about the whole situation? Because changing that energy up into thankfulness and gratefulness really gets things moving. The next thing is to really start preparing your home. So when you work with a, a qualified real estate agent, they're going to help you. They may help you stage your home. They're going to walk through and give you some suggestions that are going to make it easier for another family or whoever buyer to come in and look at your home and envision their space and their items in your home. So many times that may be that you're going to start packing away items that are very personal so that when they walk in, it's kind of like a clean slate. You might want to freshen up the paint. You might need to um, or decide to add fresh new appliances and all these different things give it a fresh slate feeling. So it may be that you have a, a certain style that you're going to have in your new home and that's your style that you love, but it may be something that other people may not love to see and it could really detour them from buying your particular home because then they can't envision their things in that house. So your, your agent will walk you through the process. And of course, it's definitely a decision that you co-create to quickly sell your home or, you know, um, and you work together and decide what you're willing to do. But actually packing those things away, whether whatever your religion is or spiritual practice or intention or um, energy, putting that into it and, and thanking the space and then saying, and now we're getting ready to go. And you're actually physically packing, physically preparing, and then donating um, in gratitude, giving back to the community, anything that's not going to fit in your new lifestyle. And so that's another way that that energetically will help. And obviously you do want to choose an agent that is going to help you through every step of the process. Now that is really important as well. It's nice to have somebody that has helped other people or personally gone through the experience themselves and can help you that way. Um, and also is has been in the real estate industry quite a while. So I do work in every state in the United States. I have incredible hand-picked agents on my team and that I refer with often. And so uh, if you're interested, give me a call and I will connect you with those people. But I also continue through the process on a consulting basis to help you every step of your way in order to 
get the results you desire, not only in your sale, but then in your purchase as well, if you are buying again. And there's so many things to consider in a move and to make it easier. Uh, it's nice to have somebody that guides you every step of the process and works with people that have done that many times. So for me personally, <laughs> that's some of the things that I did when I was getting ready to relocate uh, my main home to a vacation lifestyle. <laughs> and it was, it was really an incredible situation. Uh, and th those were the steps that I took personally. I did a lot of gratefulness and thanking. I donated a whole houseful, practically, of my my uh, personal belongings, and it felt so nice to be able to give back that way. And then, it, when I actually moved, I ended up moving um, one of my main homes over to a beautiful vacation resort community where where it's just so fun and. The, the furniture that I had and the things I had in my old space didn't wouldn't fit really. Some things I did bring, but a lot of things weren't going to fit with my new life. And it was so fortunate. I was able to buy um, beautiful furniture, um, some pre-owned from a beautiful place. So get your notes out. If you are looking for great furniture, go to Habitat for Humanity Restore. That's a wonderful place to donate. Uh, this is not a paid promotion. This is just what I, I work with them often and I love them. Uh, I have purchased many, many times to for my own personal home because there's incredible furniture and art that's donated that is just perfect and at a very fair price and here's the thing when i buy something there the money go goes toward helping people have their homes rebuilt um, with Habitat for Humanity. And that's really important to me because it's home is very important to me <laughs> and, and helping other people have a beautiful home also. And so when you donate, you're helping because the sales and the proceeds then go toward helping people build homes. And when you buy there, the same thing. And it's wonderful. If you are a contractor or if you need flooring, tiling, they have new appliances um, many times there that were donated from stores or new, like my brand new furniture set came from a Habitat for Humanity restore where a furniture store donated brand new, still wrapped furniture. <laughs> and they they needed to, they weren't selling that particular model or I don't know what they needed the floor space. And so they do that on a regular basis and they give it as a tax write off on their business. It's a donation, but then the sale, the proceeds go for helping people build homes. And so that is something, check it out before you go buying. <laughs> you might be surprised, especially in California, we have some of the best um, Habitat for Humanity restores around. And I think they know me all by first name basis there. Uh, and when I'm staging homes, many times I'll get some beautiful finds there as well as my Airbnb units. Uh, I'm able to go there first. And of course I go to other stores as well, but I just feel so good because I'm like, and this is going to help somebody's home. Somebody get a home that maybe could never afford a home. And so that is part of the process. And that was a beautiful thing. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then gosh, staging a home or, ha you know, usually your agent will help you with that uh, uh, for the most part. But some of the basics are, you know, personal photos, religious items that are a lot. Um, it could be that you need to clean up your pet space and make it really tidy. Uh, the kitchen, the furniture and appliances, you may need to take some of your furniture if you have a lot and put it in a storage unit until you move just to make the space larger and so people can envision what they're going to put where their furniture is going to go so you don't want any clutter 
<laughs> and and um, if you are if you are a minimalist, this is going to be super easy. And if you are a maximalist, <laughs> this may take a minute, and that's okay too. And whatever stage you are in your process is another thing. So there is a time in everybody's life where having a big home is super necessary. For me, it was, I mean, you know, I, I adopted three children, three children of my own. I hosted um, children from other countries because I was a private school teacher for a while and that school needed host families so the children could um, come over. So we had children from other countries in our home and I took care of elders. So we needed lots of bedrooms and space. And then there was a point where my children are off in college and, oh my gosh, you know, do I want to clean a huge house and maintain a huge house? And what do I want for my life? And, you know, the equity sitting right there in the home to create the lifestyle you want. So it may be that it's a great time to move and find a different place that, works better for you. And so I work with many clients who are in that situation. And it's, it's just so much easier when you can go have fun. It may be that uh, you have these grown children that are in other states. And so you're traveling all the time to visit everyone. And you want to see grandbabies and you want to have fun and you want to travel the world a little bit. And, you know, have a, a nice home, but maybe in a different place that's more affordable or like I have the luxury vacation lifestyle community. Uh, maybe what you're looking for, you may want to live by a lake. And it's crazy because you could think, oh, but I'm here. And what you wish for, if that's what you wish, I want to go fishing every day. I want to play golf every day. <laughs> Whatever it is you want to do, you can do it if you reorganize things whether that if whether you're renting or you have your own home or you're getting ready to get your first place sometimes it is closer than you think and so that is something that when you're doing this if you are united in your thoughts in your process that means you've really thought through this um I do consulting. I do work with people to strategically plan out their next stage of their lifestyle from beginning investing to your first home all the way through maybe retiring or investing for passive income. And so we go through those steps and planning. Once you have that clear picture of what you want, then it's just a matter of the timing of getting things sold, packed, moved, <laughs> or investing in that first or many different properties, depending on where you're at, what situation you're in, and that starting to get that passive income. So those are so many things to think about. And it's easier when you have somebody that has done that many times to work with. So look around for somebody that you can work with. And obviously, I'm happy to work with you as well. I have an incredible team and love helping people to create their lifestyle and live what you've always wanted, how you've always wanted to live now instead of waiting. All right, I'm back. I took a moment to sneeze. <laughs> that hurricane that turned into a tropical storm really got my allergies going this week. However, when you're thinking about recreating your life or building a lifestyle on your design, these steps, simple steps can make all the difference and it feels like so much, but when you really break it down, it's easier than you think and you may be closer to or already have the ability to live the life you've always wanted right now. It may be that you're looking to invest. I love my vacation home rentals and they. I am a super host <laughs> and I love that. I did furnish them all through the Habitat for Humanity and giving back that way so people can use that money for in Habitat that I purchased. Um, that money goes to people having homes. So I love the whole process and my people have honeymooned in my home. I have long-term and short-term vacation rentals that are really doing well. And so that is that income is so helpful 
And it also is helpful for the people that need a home or in between home. So many times I'll have somebody who might be building a house or they're, they're getting ready to relocate or they just relocated to Southern California and they need a temporary home. And so that provides them with an affordable temporary home that's a fair price and gives them the time they need until they get established and either buy their home or it may, they may be working in the entertainment industry or doing uh, some other short-term project for their work. And so that's another beautiful way to create homes for people and also some passive income for yourself. So those are just a few things. And I talked about, I just mentioned entertainment industry. So I, I'm hoping our strike with with the entertainment industry is over soon. So uh, you have my vote for all success with that as well. So that's again, in community, we have freedom and we have more success. Working together, we are always stronger. So having your family support you with your uh, desired outcome for your move, for your home, for your life and lifestyle, or coming together to help and support a loved one who is going through a move right now or preparing uh, is really going to make all the difference. If you're a parent and you have young adult children that are getting ready for their first home or investment property, supporting them through that, coming together as a family to help them with those first steps can really make all the difference. And that is unity working together in community. So that was our talk for today. And thank you again for joining us on this insightful episode of the Sheila Mack Show. Remember, unifying is a powerful tool that can transform your approach to success. If you're interested in learning more about our guest, John C. Morley's wisdom, head over to his website at believemeachieve.com. And if you're looking to learn more about my courses or need guidance for property investment and creating your dream lifestyle, then don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, you may reach out to me. Uh, just ask for Sheila Mack at 310-432-6400 or visit my site at SheilaMack.com to learn more. And until next time, stay unified and keep unlocking your dream lifestyle. Tune in again right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind.